Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. As I just reviewed the original film Overboard with Bodie Hawn and Kurt Russell two days ago, and I praised the film, I really loved it. I always have ever since I saw this as a kid. That's been constantly played on TV, and I got the Blu-ray, and, and even though it's bare bones, and the transfer is grainy, but that's okay. I still love the movie. But now I'm going to be reviewing the remake that just came out recently of the same title, this time with Eugenio Deves and Anna Ferris. As I said it earlier between two reviews, I already said it's a shitty remake of the original film and but granted though Eugenio Deves' performance at least um, was an icing on a cake at this point I mean, sad to say him and maybe a few others are probably the only good thing about the movie but either way as much as I love Eugenio Deves and Anna Ferris because they're both good actors talented people it's no excuse for this movie to be praised because to me it's just the same plot of the original film the difference is though is that they switch genders Davez is playing Han's role Ferris is playing Russell's role and they just added a couple of stuff that's not in the original film just to make it up for it but they still managed to throw in some of the lines of dialogue as we all remember here. Of course, um, there's one thing I did forgot about uh, when I did review the original film was that uh, Joanna Staten actually had a birthmark on her ass that's like a heart shape. Whereas in this remake, Eugenio Deves' character um, by the name of Leonardo Montenegro he has a Speedy Gonzalez tattoo on his ass. Just on the side. <laughs> See what I mean? And instead of um, violet panties with JS initials on it, guess what? It's just one stack of Trojan condoms. I mean, nothing original, just a change of difference. But still, just because they switched genders and did and just give it a Latin style for it doesn't mean it's a good movie, okay? It's amazing why this movie is becoming the highest grossing film in Mexico, mostly because of Eugenio Deves. And it's also the fact that it's now becoming a sleeper hit in the U.S. alone. I know the original film was a sleeper hit, too, but it only made $26.7 million out of its $22 million budget. But this movie is at its $12 million budget, but it makes only $91.2 million. Fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry, but to me it's just bullshit. It really is. And what's even more bullshit is the way today's critics are. Like, they, they basically dismiss the original film, calling it mediocre and everything. I'm getting sick and tired of people acting like they're fucking smart. The, the original was never mediocre to begin with. And second of all, they, these guys are, are supposed to be smart film critics these days. They can't even get some of the director's names right. Like for example, uh, James Bernelli suddenly uh, mentioned Frank Marshall instead of Gary Marshall. Or I think Peter Travers also said that that this is the first movie where Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell fall in love. But he forgot to mention Swing Shift because that was the first film. This was their second movie. And also, um, there are a few critics out there saying, well, there have been like several other remakes of good films, now they're remaking mediocre films. 
I'm sorry, but the original film was just as great as all the other great films from the 80s and 90s, as well as the 70s or whatever decade it is. But all I could say was this version is not only shitty and mediocre, I, I can guarantee you that from time to time no one's going to remember the remake. People are still going to remember the original film more. Well, the remake on the other hand is going to disappear by shore as if it had fallen overboard and it's going to want to be played on Univision and Unimos within a few days in a couple years. And then it will disappear. Plus, they had some good actors joining in too, like Eva Longoria, Switchy Kurtz is in this, I couldn't believe it. Uh, several others that I could think of. But, whatever. Now, I, I definitely enjoy Eugenio Deves in one of his best roles, because he also directed the film too, called. Instructions Not Included, that turned out to be my favorite film of his. That was five years ago. I've yet to see uh, How to Be a Land Lover, though, because I know that's actually a good film that he just did recently. I'll tell you this, I mean, that film is ten times better than this crap. And I also love Anna Ferris too, because she's best known for being in the, the scary movie films. Yeah, the, the first four films even though the third and fourth films suck and <laughs> I didn't like the fifth one either which I know she wasn't in and she just has a TV show called Mom with Alice and Jenny it's doing so well on CBS so she had some different roles that she's been in in other films but some of which were either mediocre or forgettable but in fact the last film she was in was the Emoji Movie. So, <laughs> explain that. But whatever. And what a great way to start for MGM to start uh, distributing their own films again by just releasing two remakes so far this year with Death Wish, with Bruce Willis, which was, eh, okay, but I still give it two stars because I can't recommend it doesn't hold up to the originals I mean that's for sure and we got this one I mean come on Leo the Lion is hungry as hell he definitely needs more good movies I mean it's already going to be heading its 95th anniversary anyway by next year so NGM really needs to start keeping up otherwise they're going to end up becoming bankrupt again I hope that's not the case. I mean, I, at least they brought back Orion Pictures, come to mind. I wonder if they could try to bring back United Artists to release art house films again, but maybe that's certainly the case. We'll see. Anyway, let, let's get to the review. Uh, stars once again Eugenio Davis, Anna Ferris, Eva Longoria, Mel Rodriguez, Hannah Norberg. Avea Aline Lynn, Peyton Lens Lipinski, Fernando Lujan, Cecilia Cervez, Mariana Treveno, John Hanna, Sweetsy Kurtz, Josh Segarra, Jesus Ahora, Omar Chaparro, Adrian Pride, Javier Lacroix, and Edgar Belvoir. It's written by Bob Fisher, Rob Greenberg, with Leslie Dixon, who happens, happens to be the original writer of the original story. And it's directed by Rob Greenberg. The movie begins with Meet Kate Sullivan. It was played by Anna Ferris, who's a single mother with three daughters, working with two jobs, delivering pizzas and cleaning carpets. 
and also studying for a nursing exam and getting ready to become a nurse that would be free jobs so her mother Grace who's played by Switzy Kurtz is suddenly going on a trip leaving Kate without a babysitter to take care of the girls she also has her best friend named Teresa who's played by Evelyn Longoria yeah. so anyway Kate is being assigned to clean carpets on a yacht. Yeah, apparently, you know, she went inside the bathroom and she ate those, uh, the, a bar of soap, thinking that it was candy, but it isn't. <laughs> yeah. It's being owned by Leonardo Montenegro, or Leo for short, who's played by Eugenio Devez, who's a spoiled and arrogant playboy. So after meeting one another, Leo goes out just to have fun while Kate is working. But during this time, a mechanic meets up with the captain and asks about the owner, which suddenly the captain shows him a security cam video of Leo just having a chicken fight with three girls on a jacuzzi. But meanwhile, Kate is just starting on the new room, just cleaning up, and just runs into Leo. Yeah, just showing his tattoo, and so on and so forth. Also making all these rude remarks. Actually refused to pay um, Kate, mostly because, you know, Kate couldn't give him his food. And actually fires her. So, what's Leo do? Oh, just as the, the yacht sails away, he dumps her overboard. Just like the original film where Joanna just dumps Dean off overboard. <sighs> well. This is just going to keep going on and on and on. Anyway, complaining about the events uh, with her best friend Teresa, Kate decided to ask Bobby, who happens to be Teresa's husband, about a job and says that he can actually carry uh, concrete bags all day. But Teresa nags on her husband about more about eating way too much and so on. So that's what's going on all day. So meanwhile, in Mexico, Leo's sisters Magdalena and Sophia are attending to their ill father. Magda is furious when he declares that Leo is now going to become the successor of a family-owned company and decides to visit him. But that night, Leo suddenly slips off of the yacht just trying to grab some condoms. Yep, and he falls overboard with no one noticing or helping him whatsoever. So, yep, just like the original film with Joanna. I keep saying it. So now uh, he's woken up at a beach, suffers amnesia, wanders through town only to be taken away to a hospital, showing some signs of his handful of, of personality. Magda finds him there but denies that it's his brother. So, what does she do? She basically lies to her father and just goes around pretending like he's dead. So, she just goes around to a mortuary, you know, steals a cremated jar, and just puts some uh, ashes of a barbecue, you know, with charcoal and everything, <laughs> at a local park, just put it there, and, it, and just when the father just found out about this, uh, he smells it and, and just says, my son smells like carne asada. He speaks Spanish, of course. I mean, the whole family speaks Spanish. Yeah, given Aladdin style. So Kate and her friend Teresa suddenly sees Leo on the news. Yeah, calls him an asshole. Just like like how um, Dean actually calls Joanna a bitch. <laughs> so Kate's plan was to actually 
trick Leo into becoming who would have guessed her husband so now Kate suddenly takes um, Leo away into their home with three daughters so throughout the entire month to live that lie he's just gonna go around cooking and cleaning such as cooking some some spaghetti you know wearing a giant shirt with shorts of the uh, Seattle uh, Seahawks yeah saying that he's he was once fat but he lost weight also to keep that in mind Kate's home is poor but only has a hole in the roof Leo would later fix it along with the crew and keep this in mind it's a very nice house it's not dumpy like Dean's house was in the original so great what a nice change of pace here I mean you can't even live that as a joke damn it writers and filmmakers but hey you know what do you expect from the writer who gave us uh, Meet Dave with Eddie Murphy yeah definitely having some trouble he actually wants up sleeping in the garage but then he finally gets a job working as you guessed it a carpenter so he's the one that's becoming a carpenter by you know, working on the construction of a new swimming pool that's in a local house. So he's working with, with several guys on the team. You know, one of which we're also working at a piece of place you know, where Kate works. So he just spends some time just working around. And he does the, the blubbering like, like Joanna does in the movie. So, so on and so forth, um, he's trying to take care of the girls, begin to learn their lessons, so on and so forth, and everything that goes around. Uh, oh yes, and of course, Kate also forgot their anniversary, just like how Dean forgot her birthday. So they went out, you know, they just have some romantic times together and everything that's happening until you know their father suddenly feels better you know, being in bed for, for several weeks or so and apparently uh, they were getting ready for a funeral for for Leo until they found out that he's actually alive they actually spotted him and uh, well, one of the crew actually spotted uh, Leo actually with uh, Kate and, and the rest of her daughters. You know, they're just going around, you know, just having fun. And you know, just bicycle riding and everything. And that's when they noticed that, yep, he was alive the whole time. So that's when you know, their father came over to their house, you know, picked along with you know, his sisters and everyone else just just saying exactly basically telling the truth oh and, and of course I wouldn't want to forget uh, when they found out about the, the condoms just like the panties but yes Teresa you know takes the bait saying that you know that it was hers and <laughs> coming from her husband or, oh god, I'm starting to lose uh, my memory. God, even I'm starting to lose my memory already. I'm trying to keep up with this stupid review. Okay, well, anyway, well, back to this um, Leo's being taken away by his father and, and sisters. Yeah, the daughter suddenly ran over there just, just to. You know, because they're feeling sad and lonely about, about Leo leaving. So that's just the way things have to be. So Leo is, is trying to regain his uh, memory. 
trying to tell um, the Major D and everyone else about even the captain saying about uh, what was it like, you know, as a rich playboy and why am I so rude and why do I act this way? So on and so forth. So of course, he begins to remember all the good times when, you know, he was with uh, Kate and had a lot of fun times together with the three daughters and things are just going so well. And also having some chemistry and everything. So, so because things are just not right, that's where you know Leo decided to go back. Just when uh, Kate and the rest of the crew just join in, you know, trying to go after Leo. So, yep, they both fall overboard. But unfortunately, Leo had to go for a negotiation with his father and the and his sisters. Yeah, they had to negotiate, you know, before they start falling in love. Well, by the end of the film, they got married. So now they're rich and things are going great for the better. Now, yes, I would have loved the movie if it wasn't a remake. Granted, though, I love Gigino Davez's performance as Leo Montenegro. At least he's the only one that's having fun. He definitely knows what he's doing. I mean, there's actually all the moments that he was going for. Even though he's just basically playing the same character that Bodie Hawn played as Joanna Staten. And, of course, suddenly gives the name any profit joining in. <laughs> Anna Ferris, on the other hand, she's trying. It just seems like she's just uh, wasting her talents. Uh, I, I didn't see any chemistry between Davis and Ferris together, the way Han and, and Russell was when I saw the original film. That's the problem. No chemistry. That's what's missing. Um, yeah, there are moments when, you know, one of the guys was just watching a Spanish soap opera and they actually criticized and stuff. And then, or any of this other stuff, too, that I could think of. But Or maybe some of the good moments were, you know, he was spending time with, with her daughters and, you know, trying to teach them a lesson and all that, so... So there, there might be a few memorable scenes here and there that I could deal with, but other than that, though, uh, it's just the same plot. That's all it is. It's nothing new. I mean, you're just way too familiar with it. That's the problem. It's, it's pointless. It's unnecessary. Just like 97% of today's remakes of good movies. That doesn't deserve to be remade. I mean, granted, though, you know, we live with with remakes of films that are from the original films that even though they were good or maybe they failed to do so, they improved it, but they're not bigger hits, sadly. It's just amazing why, you know, bad remakes of good movies suddenly become hits. And this is exactly why we're getting one of them. Uh, Eva Ligoria is okay as uh, Teresa, so, you know, she has her moments, but she's basically playing the Michael G. Haggerty's uh, character, you know, Billy Pratt, as a female boy. Uh, the three daughters in the film are good, I'll give you that, but they're really nothing special compared to the four boys. I mean, they, the four boys had a personality. Uh, I don't know, man. Switchy Curse is totally wasted in this movie, too. I mean, 
Granted, though, I mean, she's been a lot of good work in her career, but she plays the grandmother who's actually doing a play where she was dressed up as uh, a geisha girl. But apparently, Kate and, and her daughters thought it was a bad performance, so they decided to leave just so they can get Leo. Ugh, what a waste. Oh, and of course, you know, they even had the post credit scenes where they're just having like a video you know, like a wedding video and, and they're just having all their friends talk about you know about Leo and and Kate you know having a good time on their honeymoon that sort of thing uh, the score isn't really that memorable it's done by Lylel Workman it, it just could never compete with Anna Silvestri's score, which is a better score, in my opinion. And most of the songs are just uh, Latin music, so that's all it is. And of course, the use of today's technology, you know, like cell phones and, and <laughs> social media, tablets and all that. Like, oh great, I want to take a picture of Leo just falling down, doing all these platforms and everything. That sort of thing. I mean... Of course, the whole film is shot digitally. So it doesn't have that grainy film stock, as we all know. That's why I missed that in the original. So. Why do I bother with this? I had to see this movie because I guess the only good thing I had to say is just Eugenio Davez, you know, giving a good performance. But other than that, though, <laughs> it's a pretty forgettable remake. And from time to time, no one's going to remember, just like how uh, his character or even Joanne Staten's character is. Out of memory. So, I give Overboard, the remake, one and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.